Good evening. I hope you've had a great day. God has been good to us. We thank him for his goodness and for his mercy and for his grace. Sometimes we don't realize how good God is to us. We just take him for granted. But folks, I'm going to say something today. You need to tune in to God and realize that we're living in the last days. I spoke with Brother Mike Blanton just a little while ago. He's doing good. The foot is healing. Pray when he goes back Thursday that things will be well and that God will put him back on. Remember our nation. Remember our people. Remember our country. Folks, if we ever needed to be on fire for God, it is the day and age that we live in. I'm so good I see you tuning in, and I thank you. If I get watching the bottom of the screen and call the names, I'll forget what I'm doing. But I do thank you. And today I retitled the message, The Requirements of God. What does God require of you and I? What is God looking for in you and I? Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for the many blessings of life that you bestowed upon us. Lord, help us today to look at your word. And Father, help us to glorify you in everything that we say and do. Let it bring glory and honor and praise to you. For it is in Christ's name we pray, and amen. Let your light so shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. When you feel inadequate in serving God and carrying out his commandments, remember that he expects what you think is not what God really is looking for. He is not looking for someone that is charismatic and has charisma and perseverance and a brilliant mind. God is not looking for these things uh, uh, that you and I would look at. But what does he really require? Five things today that God requires from Christians today. And number one is sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. To be attentive and to be obedient unto his commands. God says, listen to the Spirit. The Bible said in Revelation, he that have the ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Today we're dull of hearing. We're not tuned in to the Holy Spirit. We're tuned in to man's theory and man's knowledge. Man, for too long we have listened to man's, what they think, and the way man wants to go. I'm going to tell you, God is mad at America today. God is mad because we've not stood on the word of God. My friend, God's requirement today is for you and I to let our light shine, not to uphold the thing that's contrary to the word of God, but to believe in the word of God and be sensitive to the commands uh, that God has got. He's not looking for a brilliant mind. He's not looking for someone that has uh, an excellent speech or wisdom or knowledge or theology. God is requiring you and I to be obedient to the Holy Spirit and listen to that. Secondly, he's calling us to serve, humble and glorify him and edify others rather than promoting ourselves. We're more concerned about what's in it for me. Uh, how can I promote myself? Uh, it ain't about you, my friend. Uh, I want you to understand uh, it is about the Lord uh, and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you become born again, uh, you were bought with the price, uh, and that price uh, was the blood of Jesus, uh, and he has purchased you, and you no longer belong uh, to yourself. You belong to him. You are an ambassador for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You need to glorify him with your service uh, and be obedient uh, unto him. The third thing is we need to be sacrificed, pouring ourselves out for the name of the Lord. We need to sacrifice ourselves and say, Lord, here am I. Get self out of the way and begin to listen to God and sacrifice yourself. Oh, I ain't got time for that. I don't have time to do this, Pastor. I don't have time to go here and I don't have time to go there. My friend, you got nothing more to do uh, than to serve the Lord. If you would serve the Lord and sacrifice yourself and give yourself to promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ, you may find you're a lot better off than you realize. He's wanting us to be 
a light to a lost and dying world. The world today is going to hell in a handbasket, uh, and we're not being sensitive uh, to the Holy Spirit. Oh, we get excited when somebody gets uh, uh, anointed of God, and it kind of scares us. I remember, my friend, growing up, that the Spirit of God would get a hold of somebody. They'd have an old-fashioned uh, Holy Ghost shout down uh, in the middle of the church. I haven't seen that in a long time because people don't sacrifice themselves and offer themselves on the altar. Third is fourth is self-denial. Seek the kingdom of God and his glory and not your own. Listen, we're more concerned about what we're going to gain in this life. Let me ask you something. What do you think you're going to take to heaven with you when your time comes? I said it a minute, many times. You ain't taking nothing with you. Job said, naked came I in this world, naked shall I leave it. Listen, I didn't bring anything in. I'm not going to take anything out. I love what my dear friend Brother Blanton says, and I, I steal this from time to time. He said, before you get me boxed up, cleaned up, and presented, I'm going to be walking down the streets of gold. Michael will tell you, you ain't going to take nothing with you, nothing that you brought in this world. What you own belongs to nobody. It belongs to everybody. We need to quit being so selfish today. today. Selfish. Follow him and be obedient unto him. It means not to be dedicated to ourselves but to be dedicated to the Lord. Listen, read that verse again. Let your light so shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works. What good works? And glorify your Father who is in heaven. My friend, listen to me. Sensitive to the Holy Spirit, I want to close with this. Listen, what is the Holy Spirit telling you to do? What's it telling you to do? Obey the Word of God. Obey the word of God. Obey. Serve him with all your heart, soul, strength, and might. Think about others. Pour yourself out into the ministry and serving others. Ask God to help you through this life. Folks, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. I pray we've said something today that will encourage you and help you. Don't forget tomorrow is election day. Please, please pray. You know what's right. Some of you are going to get mad at me, throw something at me, hit me. I don't really care. I'm going to tell you something. Look at what the person stands for. If they stand for abortion, you can't vote for them. If they stand for same-sex marriage, you can't vote for them. If they stand in, in contrary of this word and what this word said, you can't vote for them. You better think about it because God is going to hold us responsible in this election. He's going to hold us responsible. You better think about how to go. And like I said, sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Get down on your knees and pray and ask God to help you make the right decision in how you should go. Listen, I'm not telling you how to vote. I'm telling you what to believe in. Believe in the Word of God. If they don't believe in the Bible and have not upheld this Bible and they believe in murdering and robbing and killing, that is not of God. My friend, you need to think about what's going on in our country. Pastor loves you couple quick announcements. Don't forget tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, Brother Charlie will be back on Coffee with Charlie. It'll be a great time, and we love it. Tomorrow afternoon at 4.30, good Lord willing, I'll be back on uh, with a short devotion. Also, it's on uh, our website. We did start our uh, radio ministry on Sunday night at 9.30. I don't know exactly how many people tuned in. I know I got a lot of comments today, and different things, but it's on Harbor Radio uh, there.com and it's on Satellite Radio um, 360 and you can tune in there. Don't forget, tomorrow morning, when you go to the polls, make sure that you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And think about this in closing, and we're going to pray. Would God be pleased with the vote that you vote? Can you stand before the Heavenly Father, and will he be pleased with how you vote? That's all that matters. You don't got to please Brother Slater. You only got to please the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings of life. I pray for my dear friend Mike and Teresa and Shane and Levi and their ministry. Lord, I pray for Mike's health. I pray, God, that you touch my brother from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. I pray for my Aunt Bonnie, who's battling cancer right now, as we visited her this afternoon. And, Lord, as she confessed you as Lord and Savior, as she asked you to forgive her of her sins and to come into her life. Lord, we pray that you bless the family. We know, Lord, that her time is limited here on earth. But, Lord, eternity waits on the other side for your children. I pray, God, for our president and vice president. I pray for our people today. Oh, God, help us to make the right decisions. Oh, God, let us not go the way grandpa and grandma and ways of others. But, Lord, let us stand upon biblical principles today. Let us stand upon the word of God. Let us not be ashamed, oh, God, when we stand before you. But, oh, God, look at us tonight as David said, search my heart, O God, if there be any sin or any iniquity in me, O God, remove it. Help us, O God, to make the right decision, for it is in Christ's name we pray, and amen, and amen. Pastor's going to say good night, good evening, until tomorrow morning with Coffee with Charlie. Good evening.